welcome everyone so today we will start uh, this uh, design of uh, this longitudinal girder which is the second component of t beam slab bridge so in the previous lecture we had uh, completed the design of deck slab the first component the second component is longitudinal girder uh, so let's start this design so to design this longitudinal girder we have to adopt corbin's theory to find out uh, to uh, to find the reaction factors So first we will find the reaction factors using Corbin's theory. Okay. So as per this theory, so let us draw this diagram. Uh, Let us say this is this, uh, so there are uh, in this design we have three numbers of longitudinal girders so let's say these are the three longitudinal girders a b and c so as you know the distance between this two girders are 2.5 meter this is also 2.5 meter so these are the a and c are the outer girder and b is the inner girder so this is also outer girder okay and this uh, total distance is 7.5 okay this total distance is 7.5 uh, so this is the centroid of the bridge this is the cg of the bridge so let's place the load uh, class a tracked vehicle let's say this is w1 this is w2 so your uh, resultant load will be let's say here w okay actually these two values are same this is w1 this is also w1 and the eccentricity will be distance from resultant force uh, to the CG so this is eccentricity okay so as we know for class A drag vehicle distance between this two wheel load is 2.05 meter that you have calculated in design of uh, deck slab sorry in design of uh, your uh, slab culvert we can refer the design of slab curvet where we have calculated this uh, distance between the two wheels is 2.05 meter okay so what will be this eccentricity then this eccentricity this can be calculated it will be uh, this is 2. Point, uh, this total is 2.5 so 2.5 minus 2.5 minus 2.05 divided by 2 that will give you this distance this distance okay, that will be 5 minus 2.05 divided by 2 so this is coming 0 0.075 okay so this value is 0 0.075 so this e value will be how much 0 0.075 plus 0 0.075 
0.05 by 2 plus 0.05 which is equal to 1.1 meter so eccentricity is 1.1 meter okay so we have calculated the eccentricity that is equals to 1.1 meter this is uh, uh, which is the distance between the axis of the bridge to the cg of the load so next we will calculate the reaction factor so separately we have to calculate for outer girder and inner girder it will be different so what will be the reaction factor for so first we will calculate for outer girder so for outer girder let's say uh, what is the expression rs is equal to summation of w divided by n 1 plus sum of i divided by summation of dx square into i into dx into e okay so this is the expression so um, for outer gutter that means it will be r a it will be r a so there are two number of loads w1 i can write that is equals to w by 2 or 0.5 w so two summation of w1 uh, w1 plus w2 two loads are there n will be 3 3 number of longitudinal girder 1 plus uh, your moment of inertia it will be 3i so three number of girder plus uh, summation of dx square uh, so dx means this distance which is 2.5 so 2.5 uh, 2.5 square plus 2.5 square so 2 into 2.5 square into i so dx is 2.5 into 1.1 1 .1 is the eccentricity Okay, so it will be if you calculate this RA value, it will be uh, zero point five five three six W. Okay, by putting W one is equal to W by two, we'll get this. So this is for outer gutter. Similarly, for inner girder RB, what will be this dx value? It will be 0. For inner girder, so for this girder, your this value of dx will be 0. For RA, dx is 2.5. Okay, so it will be 2 into W1 by 3 into 1 plus dx equals to 0 means this term will be 0 so it will be 0 0.3333 w so this rb is equal to 0 point okay now so you have calculated the uh, reaction factors for the inner gutter and the outer gutter this is for outer and this is for inner next next we will calculate the dead load the dead load from the slab so while considering the longitudinal girder we have to consider the load of slab okay so let's draw the figure this is the parapet railing then curve okay this is continued this is one girder this is the parapet 
the railing uh, whose dimension is 150 cross 150 okay. and this height is 1000 mm and uh, this one curve this is 300 and this horizontal it is 600 and the depth of the slab it is 200 all are in mm and the distance from here to here that you can calculate uh, it will be 1100 mm okay. and wiring code will be there of thickness 80 mm So let's so what are the loads? First weight of parapet railing okay so this is this is number one see this is number one then weight of the wearing coat number two weight of the deck slab number three weight of the curve number four so all these four component all these loads uh, this longitudinal girder has to carry all these loads okay so one by one we have to calculate so for railing let's take this is point to assume this let's take 0 0.7 kilo newton per meter run then second one weight of the wearing coat wearing coat thickness is 0 0.08 0 0.08 into into uh, unit weight is 22 and the length let's take this this from here to here only for this that is 1.1 is equal to 1.936 kilo newton next weight of the deck slab weight of the deck slab your thickness is 0 0.2 into 24 is the unit weight then 1.1 which is equal to 5.28 kilo newton okay. next is weight of fourth one weight of the curve weight of the curve uh, that is equal to so we can take uh, this total okay and because in the deck slab we have considered this much only 1.1 so this thing we have to consider here so it will be 0.3 plus 0.2 will be the height or the thickness into uh, point six sorry unit weight is twenty four into length is point six so this is coming seven point two kilo newton so what will be the total if you add all this it will be around fifteen point one one six kilo newton per meter run So what we have calculated what we have calculated this is this is the load up to here up to here okay so let's draw another figure Okay, so we have three number of longitudinal girders. Total three number of longitudinal girders. So what we have calculated that is up to here. This part. And here. 
this part so our weight of this portion is 15.116 kilo newton per meter run and this part also is symmetrical it will be same kilo newton per meter run okay now we have to add the weight of this middle portion so what will be the weight of this middle portion let's say so this a weight of uh, this this part this part from here to here that we have already calculated okay uh, the weight of let's see the dead load dead load of the dead slab which we've calculated 6.56 kilo newton per meter square previously we have calculated while designing the deck slab okay this is 6.56 kilo newton per 1 meter square of area so let's multiply the length you can write 6.56 into what will be the length from here to here this is that's 2.5 this is 2.5 Again, this is 2.5 plus this is thickness of uh, half of this thickness of the longitudinal cutter is 300. So, 0.3 by 2, 0.3 by 2. Then that will be the whole length. So, it will be this into 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 0.3 by 2 <coughs> plus 0.3 by 2 okay so this is coming how much this is coming 34.77 kilo newton per meter okay so uh, let's uh, let's calculate the total suppose this is uh, this is part one this is part 1 it will be same this is part 2 ok so the total dead load of the deck it will be 2 times 15.116 plus 34.77 which is equal to 65 kilo newton 65 kilo newton so this is the uh, weight of the deck slab uh, of which which will be taken by the longitudinal girder so how many longitudinal girders are there three number of longitudinal girders are there so this load will be uh, carried uh, this load will be divided into three times you can write the dead load per longitudinal girder will be 65 by 3 is 21.66 kilo newton per meter run this is the load taken by a single longitudinal girder okay dead load now next Okay, so next we will calculate the dead load bending moment in main girder or the longitudinal girder what will be the bending moment dead load bending moment Uh, 
सो फर्स्ट लेट्स कैलकुलेट द लाइव लोड वेंडिंग मोमेंट देन वील कैलकुलेट द डेट लोड वेंडिंग मोमेंट कैलकुलेट द लाइव लोड वेंडिंग मोमेंट इन द गार्डर सो वर इज द स्पैन सो टोटल स्पैन इज सिक्सटीन मीटर ओके एंड इम्पैक्ट फैक्टर क्लास ए ट्रैक्ट व्हीकल is one point one so let's draw this this is the total span sixteen meter so you have to place for maximum bending moment we have to place the vehicle at the midpoint and this 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 total length will be three point six meter this is for class A drug vehicle and loading will be seven hundred kilometer total loading so if we consider the CG, so this distance will be one point eight meter. Okay. So, uh, to find out the moment, we can draw the ILD for bending moment. So in this case, if we draw the ILD, so this is the center. This is the center. the loading area okay, so these are the loading area okay so uh, how to calculate the moment using ILD moment will be equal to W into area okay so the loading is how much seven uh, seven seven hundred kilonewton divided by three point six seven hundred kilonewton per 700 divided by 36 kilo newton per meter into what will be the area so to calculate the uh, to find the area I have to find this ordinate okay you have to find the ordinate so this is let's say this is yc and this is y1 y1 this is also y1 it will be same so yc what is the expression for yc yc is equal to uh, uh, if you remember this will be a into l minus a by okay so in our case a is equal to how much uh, 8 from here to here a is equal to 8 total length is 16 minus 8 divided by 16 so this is coming 4 meter so this is 4 meter now uh, we can calculate this y1 y1 and if this is y2 then y1 will be equal to y2 that you can calculate by the similarity of triangle this is one triangle this is another triangle so from the similarity of triangle we can calculate first find this length okay so this length will be this is 8 and uh, this is your 6.2 8 minus 1.2 8 okay this is 8 so 8 minus this this is 1.8 so 8 minus 1.8 that will give you 6.2 so from the similarity of triangle you can find this 6.2 by 8 into 4 is equal to 3.1 so this is 3.1 y1 is equal to y2 is equal to 3.1 so what will be this area uh, there are two trapezoidal of same area so area of a single trapezoidal will be half into 3.1 plus 4 into uh, this length this is 1.8 multiplying with 2 2 number of trapezoidal so this is coming 2485 kilonewton meter 2485 kilonewton meter now now considering the impact factor and the reaction factor this moment for 
outer girdle will be 2485 1.1 .1, which is the impact factor and reaction factor for outer girdle is it that we have calculated 0 0.5536 so this is equal to 1513 kilonewton meter and for inner girdle this is 2485 into 1.1 .1, reaction factor 0 0.33 that is coming 912 kilo newton meter yes so now uh, next we will calculate the live load shear live load shear so to calculate the live load shear we have to place this uh, live load near the girder okay so first we have to uh, to get maximum shear due to live load We have to place the live load near the girder. Okay, so this load has to be placed between the support. and the exterior girder or the outer girder okay uh, so uh, this year force will be found as a reaction developed by the longitudinal girder okay so let's draw this figure This is the plan it is. Okay. So this is A. First uh, outer longitudinal girder. B will be the inner girder. C will be another outer girder. Okay. So this distance is 2.5 meter. This is 2.5 meter. And uh, we have 5 number of cross girder. And distances this is 4 meter 4 meter 4 meter 4 meter okay so we have to place the load near the support let's say if this is this is one wheel this is another wheel uh, so let's say this is w1 and this is w2 so both the loads are equal this is 350 kilonewton this is also 350 kilonewton okay. uh, so this a distance between this two will so from here to here uh, that will be 2.05 meter so what will be this uh, rest this rest value will be from here to here it will be 2.5 minus 2.05 this is equal to 0 0.45 meter 0 0.45 meter and this one this is 2.05 meter okay and And this uh, length of this loading, this this length, this length will be how much? This length, uh, this is three point six meter. So if this is three point six meter, so 
the CG of the loading so this will be uh, 3.6 by 2 so 1.8 meter if it is 1.8 meter the distance from here the rest part will be this total is 16 so 16 minus 1.8 so this is coming 14.2 meter 14.2 meter uh, this is your uh, 16 minus 3.652 14.2 meter okay so this is the figure showing the location of IRC class AA tracked vehicle for maximum shear weight so this is the position of the loading so next we will calculate uh, what will be the reaction on uh, the outer garter that is a reaction on outer garter that is a Owing to W2 and what will be the reaction owing to W1. Okay. So this first one will be how much? So this this first one owing to W2. This one I can write W2 into 2.05 divided by 2.5 okay. w2 into distance from here to here 2.05 divided by total distance is 2.5 because you are finding the reaction on the outer garter okay here here we are finding the reaction so this this into so here the reaction will be in this direction this is the opposite okay so this into 2.5 should be equal to or or if you draw the figure let's say this is this will be your ra uh, so here the loading this is how much w1 and here the loading is w2 and this is this distance is your uh, how much 0 0.45 and the rest is 2.05 so if you uh, should take this ra you are finding this ra so you have to take the sorry yeah, uh, we have to take the uh, your moment from here to be 0 by taking the moment about this point 0 so it will be how much RA into 2.5 be equal to W2 into 2.05 okay so this is the thing same thing W2 into 2.05 What is W2? 350 into 2.05 divided 2.5. So this is equal to 287 kilometer. Okay, 287 kilometer. Similarly, what will be the reaction on the outer garter A owing to W1? Owing to W1. So owing to W1, it will be owing to W1 into to this. So if we take the reaction about this, RA into W1. Sorry, RA into 2.5. RA into 2.5 will be equal to W1 into distance will be 0 from here. So that is your RA into 2.5 is equal to W1 into 0. 
so what will be this array w1 into 0 divided by 2 upon 5 which is equal to 0 so this will be 0 okay so the total reaction going to w1 and w2 will be 287 plus 0 that is equal to 287 kilonewton okay this is the reaction on the outer border similarly we can find the reaction on the inner garden that is B the action on the inner garden that is B uh, so first we will find here so this will be B so we will take from this point the location is same this is your w2 here this is w1 and this distance is 2.05 and this distance is 0 0.45 okay so first uh, going to w1 will be the reaction going to uh, w1 okay let's just find for w2 going to w2 so we'll take reaction from here so rb into 2.5 is equal to w2 into how much from here w2 into 0 0.45 okay so rb will be w2 into 0 0.45 by 2.5 so this is 350 into 0 0.45 divided by 2.5 which is equal to 63 kilonewton okay. next going to w1 going to w1 so if we take from here so rb into 2.5 is equal to w1 into same 2.5 okay so rb will be equal to w1 which is equal to 350 kilonewton so the resultant will be 63 plus 350 which is equal to 413 kilonewton this is for inner garden draw this diagram this is the span the total span of the 16 meter so here uh, this is this is 18 sorry 1.8 and this is 14.2 meter so uh, what will be the reaction in garter B and what will be the maximum reaction in garter what will be the maximum reaction in garter B that is the inner garter so that will be how much 413 into 14.2 divided by 16 okay this is 413 so this will be equal to 366 kilonewton and the maximum reaction in girder A this will be 287 into 14.2 divided by 16 is equal to 253 kN now considering the effect of impact factor Considering the effect of impact factor, 
and this is the she uh, live road shear for inner girder it uh, will be 366 into 1.1 which is 402.6 kilonewton and for outer girder 253 into 1.1 .1, 280.5 kN. So this is your live load shear. Now come to the dead load part. What will be the dead load? Bending moment and shear force in the main girder. So if we draw the figure, uh, this is the border. So we'll have five number of cross guard. Okay. And Okay, this is three degree. So, uh, th this is the this is the longitudinal guard. Three longitudinal guard, and these are the cross guard. Okay, so. Uh, this this total length is how much 1.6 meter 1600 mm and this is 200 mm the rest will be 1400 mm okay and this total length this is how much 16 meter okay and distance between two cross guard this is 2.5 meter okay. so that means the depth of the cross guard is 1600 mm and you can write the depth of the beam is 1400 mm and width of the beam this is 300 mm so the weight of the beam per meter run this will be unit weight multiplied with 0.3 into 1.4 which is equal to 10.08 kilo newton per meter uh, this is your uh, your uh, uh, cross guard with of the cross guard so what will be the reaction on the main guard due to this cross guard which will be how much 10.08 kilo newton per meter so multiply it with 2.5 meter this is equal to 25.2 kilo newton 25.2 kilo newton so what is the total dead load per meter on the main girder or the longitudinal girder that will be your slab weight we have calculated previously 21 point something 21.66 this is the dead load per one single longitudinal guard due to the weight of the slab from the slab weight from the slab 
so this is equal to 21.66 kilonewton per meter plus 10.08 kilonewton per meter so this is due to the Dick's law and this is due to the cross garden okay the total weight will be 31.74 kilonewton per meter 31.74 kilonewton per meter so this is the reaction on the main garden this is one foot and this is the total dead load included in the cross garden this is your second type of okay so if we draw So this is A, this is B, this whole length is 16 meter, span, total span is 16 meter and there are three number of longitudinal girders are there. Okay, so this distance is hmm, 4 meter each. Okay. So here you will have VA which will be VB. Okay, this will be the CG. So this will be 8 meter. So what are the loadings? Now reaction on the main garter due to the cross garter. Reaction on the main garter due to the cross garter. This is 25.2 kilonewton. 25.2 kilonewton. This is 25.2 kilonewton. Another is the total dead load per meter on the what is dead load means this, this will be in new okay. So this loading this is 31.74 kilonewton per meter. Okay, so now we will calculate the maximum bending moment. Obviously, that will be at the center. So before that we have to find out the reactions so taking moment about v equals to 0 so what are the moments va into 16 minus 25.2 into 12 this one this into this distance 12 minus 25.2 into 18 second row this one minus 25.2 into 4 this one third one minus due to you there 31.74 into total length is 16 into 16 by 2 this is equal to 0 so uh, after solving this we will get this VA value 2 that is equal to VB so now we can calculate the maximum bending moment maximum bending moment will be at the center of the span okay. so that is equal to VA that is 292 into distance from the CG so this is 8 meter 8 meter minus minus due to this 25.2 into 4 distance minus due to the UTL 31.74 into uh, what length is 8 into 8 by 2 4 this is equal to 1018 kilonewton meter okay so this is the bending moment due to dead load and this is the shear force 292 okay now next so we have calculated both the uh, live load 
बेंडिंग मोमेंट एंड द डेड लोड बेंडिंग मोमेंट लाइव लोड शेयर एंड द डेड लोड शेयर नाउ विल कैलकुलेट द डिजाइन बेंडिंग मोमेंट एंड डिजाइन शेयर फोर्स फॉर विच यू विल डिजाइन द लॉन्गिट्यूडनल गार्ड सो यू हैव टू कंसिडर द सेफ्टी फैक्टर सेफ्टी फैक्टर फ्रॉम your irc 6 till here b2 is number 93 so for this it will be 1.35 times the dead load moment and 1.5 for live load moment okay so let's calculate bending moment dead load bending moment live load bending moment and this is the design bending moment so for outer girder for inner girder separately you have to calculate so for outer girder this is 1218 किलो न्यूटन मीटर फॉर इनर गर्डर इज सेम वन टू वन एट किलो न्यूटन मीटर दिस इज द डेड लोड मोमेंट एंड लाइव लोड मोमेंट यू कैलकुलेट सेपरेटली फॉर आउटर वन फाइव वन थ्री किलो न्यूटन मीटर एंड फॉर इनर नाइन टूल्व किलो न्यूटन मीटर सो वट इज द डिजाइन बेंडिंग मोमेंट वन पॉइंट थ्री फाइव टाइम द डेड लोड मोमेंट वन टू वन एट Plus one point five times one five one three. Sorry, live load moment. So this is equal to three nine one four kilo newton meter. Second one one point three five times one two one eight live load moment. So dead load moment one point five times live load moment. So this is equal to three zero one two. किलो न्यूटन मीटर सिमिलरली इफ यू कैन इफ यू कैलकुलेट दिस शेयर फोर्स शेयर फोर्स फॉर आउटर गार्डर इट विल बी फॉर इनर गार्डर सो फॉर आउटर गार्डर वट इज द डेड लोड शेयर फोर्स वट इज द लाइव लोड शेयर फोर्स एंड वट इज द डिजाइन वेल्यू ऑफ शेयर फोर्स सो फॉर आउटर गार्डर दिस इज टू नाइंटी टू किलो न्यूटन same for inner live load shear force for outer girder 280.1 kN that we have calculated and for outer 402.6 kN so let's find the design shear force one point three five times live load One point five times so this is equal to eight one four point two kilo newton similarly this is one point three five times two ninety two plus one point five times four zero two point six which is equal to nine ninety eight kilo newton so we can Let's see here. Ah, uh, so out of this two, this is the maximum, and out of this two, this is the maximum. Okay. So while designing, we have to consider uh, the design bending moment of outer girder, and for shear, we will check for inner girder. The next step is design of reinforcement. So we will take this MU value three nine one four kilo newton meter, and VU will be nine ninety eight kilo newton. And 
in the designing we will assume 25 in dia bar with an effective cover of 150 mm so the effective depth will be 1600 minus 150 that is equal to 1450 mm okay uh, so here we will uh, take a single garter section will be like this a T section so this will be DF this is 200 and uh, this will be 2.5 meter or you can say DF is equal to 2.5 meter okay. and this uh, effective depth here there will be reinforcement so the effective depth will be 1450 mm D. Okay. FE and sorry your uh, FY is 415, FE 415 and M25 bit of concrete we will use. So assuming so while designing with T beam, first you have to assume the position of the neutral axis. Okay. So first assuming assuming the neutral axis so first we'll assume that neutral axis is within the flange neutral axis is within the flange that is xu is less than df okay xu is less than df here initially it is here this is your xu so if this is the case now this uh, flange beam can be designed as a rectangular beam so this is point 0.36 fck df xu into d minus 0.42 xu okay so first we have to check so what is the mu 3914 into 10 to the power 6 is equal to 0.36 into fck 25 bfs 2500 into xu 1450 minus 0.25 xu so by solving this this xu is coming 124.45 mm which is less than df okay so our assumption is correct hence the neutral axis lies within the flange if neutral axis is lying within the flange now we can calculate the area of steel like rectangular beam 0.87 FISTD into 1 minus FISD divided by FCK bd so just put all the values d is 1450 into 1 minus okay. so solve this you will get the area of steel of 7750 mm square the number of bar 7750 divided by 
by four into twenty five square is equals to sixteen. So we provide sixteen number of twenty five mm diameter. Oh, so we cannot provide all these sixteen number of bars in a single row. So let's provide in four number of rows. Okay. So here we have to provide in four row. So this is a sixteen twenty five mm dia bar. Next. Design of reinforcement for shear. So this is for flexure. This is for shear. And so we will design for a shear force of nine ninety eight millimeter. So first, you have to check whether this much of a uh, shear a shear sh force can be taken by the concrete or not. So to do that, first you have to find out the shear strength of the concrete. As per IFC hundred twelve. Here, yeah, this is the expression is zero point one two k eighty zero one f c k zero point three three into v plus d into t where k is one plus two hundred by d root over which is equal to one plus one point three seven This should be less than equal to two, so this is okay. Row one will be S D provided divided by D W into D. So S D provided is what is S D provided? Sixteen number of twenty five mm. Sixteen into five by four into twenty five square. So this is equal to seven eight five four mm square. Three hundred one four five zero. So this is equal to zero point zero one one. It should be less than zero point zero two. So this is okay. So let's calculate V R D C. This is equal to zero point one two one point three seven eighty. Zero point zero one eight twenty five to the power zero point three three into three hundred into one four five zero. This is equal to two thirty three kilometer, which is less than nine ninety eight kilometer. So here, uh, what is the balance force for which we have to provide the uh, shear reinforcement? Balance here is nine ninety eight minus two thirty three seven sixty five kilometer. So for this much amount of uh, shear shear force, you have to provide the stirrups. So let us assume ten mm dia stirrup, four legged. So what will be the area of the stir of ASB? So 
this v is per core 0.87 if y is with d divided by v at ds so this is the v at ds this is the balance shear so 0.87 415 pi by 4 10 square into 4 into 1450 divided by 765 into 10 to the power 3 so this is equal to 215 ml so let's provide 200 ml so provide 10 mm dia 4 legged stirrups at a rate of 200 mm center to center spacing so this is all about our design of longitudinal garden